business Everything that you're about to witness Get up, come out and try to get this This is all a part of my sickness But listen up, cause you're about to miss this Everything that you're about to witness Get up, come out and try to get this And this is all a part of my sickness Hello and welcome to Crack the Cred, the show that takes a mystery out of cracking passwords or finding ways around them. I'm your host, Dana Epp. Today I thought we'd catch up on a viewer's email. Last week I was sent a, a really simple question that, uh, that reads like this. Hi Dana, love your show. Well, thank you very much. You've shown a lot of ways to deal with passwords on Windows, but I have an ask. Can you please show how to get the root password on a Linux server? We have an old web server and no clue how to get in now that the Linux geek has left the company and refuses to tell us the password. Please help. Jeff, I'm sorry I shouldn't laugh. Um, yeah, no problem. That's actually a pretty simple question to ask and it's a pretty simple thing to show. So uh, let's do that for you, Jeff. Um, it's not that hard. All you need to do is get yourself a live CD of some sort on Linux. So you can get anything from Nopix or Ubuntu or my favorite's just using a pretty standard Backtrack CD. You simply put it into the target system and uh, boot it up. And from there, we'll be able to um, do some interesting things to the hard drive that would allow us to seize back that Linux server. So what we do at this point is we allow it to boot up until it gets to that boot screen. In my case, because I'm using Backtrack, it gives me a, a whole bunch of different menu options to set up safe mode or install it to disk. Or I just want to take the simple one of the default boot text mode. And if we boot into that, we're gonna get the capabilities to get to a shell that gives us some information uh, as it's been booting and posting. Sometimes you can get that same information from dmessage and uh, allow us to have direct access to, in memory, the operating system, in this case, the, this Linux uh, distro. But what we really wanna do is get to the hard drive. We wanna get to the, the data that's sitting there. So all I have to do is if I CD into the mount directory, um, I can make a temporary directory. I'm gonna call mine target just to make it simple. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to mount the default hard drive that's on the server. So in this case here, I'm just gonna type mount slash dev slash SDA1. And I know that because I can see that from the messages on boot that that's where my hard drive is. If your hard drive is somewhere different in the system, uh, you'd have to use obviously the, the drive that and volume that that's tied to. Uh, you can Google if you need to find a little more information on how to determine the disk that you need to. Uh, if you're not sure though, there's a good chance that dev slash SDA1 would be a pretty good ch uh, choice for you. And then we just need to mount it somewhere. So in my case here, I'm gonna mount it to that temp directory I created called slash mount slash target. And at this point, we've now mounted the hard disk and allows us to move into it. So now if I just CD into target, we can take a quick look and see there is that base operating system of the server. So what I wanna do at this point is I want to be able to basically seize or get access to that root account. And the easiest way I can do this is if I CD into the etc directory, I have the capability of accessing a whole bunch of different files here. Now, the default one that people are gonna start running to right away is the password file, um, but that's actually not the right one. Uh, you'll notice here, as you can see an X that's right after this root colon, and what that's telling me is that the actual password file is stored somewhere else. For, for many, many years now, um, the password, the hash of the password is not actually stored in the password file, it's actually stored in a, a different file called the shadow file. So if I go and I edit that shadow file, I can see right here for that root account, there is that hashed value. Now, here's the interesting thing and how Linux works, is it will use that to validate and verify during login if you, if you have one there. However, if it's blank or empty, then that considers it to be a, a blank password or not needing a password. So all it is really, is you find where the colon is after root and delete everything after that. Now you're gonna use your favorite editor, whatever that may be, I'm just using Vi here, but what I'll just do is delete everything between the two colons and then I'm gonna save that out by going uh, colon W, or I could have went just colon X, which would have done it, and now we're done. And at this point, uh, all I need to do is reboot the computer and let it post, and once it gets to the point of the prompt for login, I'm gonna type in root and watch what happens. And you're in, no password needed at all. So we've now bypassed that, and now we just need to you know, lock it back down. So in this case, we're gonna go and uh, reset the root password. So we simply type P-A-S-S-W-D, or password root. It's gonna ask for a new password, which I enter in. Confirm. And there you go. At this point, if I was to exit out of the shell, and I go to try to log in again as root, you'll now notice that I'm 
prompted. So at this point, I have now changed that password and seized, seized back this server. So now, just like many of the other episodes, one of the questions obviously that'll get asked is, so how do you defend against this? Well, obviously like those Windows servers, you're not gonna have BitLocker. Uh, however, you can still use uh, full disk encryption and system encryption that's d out there. There's lots of different ways of doing it. Uh, I'm a fan of using TrueCrypt for something like that. Um, now in the Linux kernel, there's that capabilities. Um, with Lux, it gives us some capabilities to, to do the key exchange and management that way. Uh, but you find what's your favorite flavor to help uh, eliminate that, or of course, lock it down and uh, have it in a physical place so that someone can't get access to it. So there you go. I hope that helps you, Jeff. It's pretty easy to get back and seize that Linux server. If you have any other questions or you want to have any feedback, comments, or maybe even a suggestion for an upcoming episode, please feel free to follow me on Twitter or go to our website at crackthecred.tv and leave us a Facebook message. Of course, in the end, this goes to show. It doesn't matter what the operating system is, if you have physical access to it, it's not really their server anymore.